I shouldn't have to make this video and you should not have to watch this video, but when the level of the average doctor's laziness and or incompetence reaches a certain level, then I have to reach out to you and say, hey, you need to be aware of this, even though you're not a doctor and it's not your job. Uh, this is very important. This is about a class of antibiotics that are very much over over prescribed in the United States and in other countries that have a serious black box warning on the package insert and that harm thousands of patients a year that should not be prescribed for common infections yet still are each and every day. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let me explain what's going on to you so that you can be prepared to protect your, yourself and your family in case your doctor is just not willing to do the job that they signed up to do. There are currently six different drugs that are FDA approved in this drug class. And I'm gonna put a visual up so you can look at this, maybe take a screenshot, uh, come back and watch this again later and write these down. Moxifloxacin, Ciprofloxacin, Ciprofloxacin extended release, Gemifloxacin, levofloxacin and ofloxacin. These are the fluoroquinolones. These drugs are very commonly prescribed by primary care doctors for such, such inconsequential infections as sinus infections, bronchitis, skin infections, and bladder infections, urinary tract infections. Now, first and foremost, you should understand that the vast majority of sinus infections and bronchitis are caused by viruses, which no antibiotic fights or treats or improves at all. So 85% of the time, if you have a sinus infection or an ear infection or a bronchial infection or a throat infection, it's a virus. No antibiotic on the planet is gonna shorten the amount of time you're sick, is going to fight the virus, is going to heal you faster. Uh, the average doctor should know this. Many of them seem not to know this at all. So it very commonly for a sinus infection, either Levaquin, Levofloxacin or Cipro, Ciprofloxacin is prescribed for a sinus infection, which 85% uh, of the time is viral. And the other 15% of the time, if it is bacterial, there are other less harmful, less severe, less powerful antibiotics that will treat the bacterial sinus infection just fine without all the disastrous side effects and complications that I'm gonna tell you about in just a minute that come along with this drug class. The same goes for bronchitis. The vast majority of the time it's viral. You don't need an antibiotic at all. In the 15% of cases that are bacterial, there are very inexpensive, very safe antibiotics that will treat that bronchitis just fine uh, without you having all the potential side effects that come along with the fluoro Quinolones. Same goes for bladder infections and pelvic infections. 85% of the time they're viral or fungal. 15% uh, of the time they are bacterial, but you can take a much cheaper, much safer antibiotic for them. So the question becomes is why are primary care doctors, why are internal medicine doctors, family medicine doctors, OBGYNs, pediatricians, uh, gerontologists, why are they prescribing this basically a, a, a nuclear bomb when all that is needed is just a, a small caliber rifle. Why are they doing that? Well, the majority of the time it's out of habit. They've been prescribing Cipro for bladder infections for years, or they've been prescribing uh, levofloxacin for sinus infection for years. That's just what they do. That's the only tool that they know how to use in the toolbox. Many primary care doctors think that you expect to receive an antibiotic prescription if you have some sort of infection that you went to the doctor to get checked. And indeed, that is true with some patients. They, they expect a prescription for an antibiotic and they'll get upset if they don't get one. Now, that does place some extra pressure on the primary care doctor to prescribe an antibiotic, but that still doesn't mean that they should. And it definitely does not mean that they should prescribe one of these fluoroquinolones. So every single drug in this drug class has a black box warning. 
that the physician should 100% know about and should 100% of the time discuss with you before they write the prescription and before you accept the prescription, fill the prescription and take the prescription. So in this particular case, all of the fluoroquinolones contain a black box warning saying that it, they, they could potentially cause irreversible damage to tendons and to peripheral nerves. So uh, tendonitis, tendon rupture, peripheral neuropathy, these things can not only happen, but they could be permanent. Very, very, very concerning. Uh, if you have myasthenia gravis, then you absolutely should never take a fluoroquinolone unless it's given to you by a specialist after you've had the discussion. Hey, I have MG. Are you sure I should take Cipro? Uh, and them say, yes, I understand there is a risk, but the benefits outweigh the risks. So every doctor before they give you one of these fluoroquinolones, they should have, first of all, have, have a, an internal discussion in their own brain, whether they should be writing this prescription or not for what diagnosis they've given you. But every single patient who receives a fluoroquinolone should give informed consent before they take that antibiotic. And what that means is, is that the doctor actually had a discussion with you. Hey, this has got a black, black box, box warning. Uh, it could cause permanent nerve damage. It could cause uh, permanent tendonitis. Uh, I just wanted you to be aware of that. I think you need this antibiotic. Do you accept the risks of this antibiotic to which the patient would either say uh, yes or hell no. And that's what informed consent means. So how many of you guys have been given Cipro or Leviquin or Avalox? And you're like, no, the doctor didn't tell me there was a black box warning. No, they didn't tell me I could have permanent nerve damage from taking that. Uh, so you were not given a chance to give your doctor informed consent to use that treatment on you. I think that's kind of a big deal. The only time you should be given a fluoroquinolone and accept one from your doctor for a sinus infection, a lung infection, or a bladder infection is if, number one, the doctor discussed this with you and you gave informed consent, but, and also the doctor said, look, there is no other antibiotic that this bacteria is susceptible to. This is the only one that will work. Or your infection is so serious that I think it endangers your life. Therefore, the, the benefits of taking this fluoroquinolone outweighs the risks. Otherwise, the, you should never take a fluoroquinolone in an outpatient setting. Now, if you're an inpatient in a hospital, especially if you're in the intensive care unit, if you're close to death, then of course, we're gonna pull out all the big guns as a doctor, and we might give you things that have potential, potentially significant risks just to get the benefits that they may give you because there may be no other antibiotic in the pharmacy that's going to save your life. But if you're in an outpatient setting, you went to a doctor's office or an urgent care, and they give you levofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, any of the fluoroquinolones, and they don't let you give informed consent, and they don't tell you, hey, there's no other drug that'll, that'll fix this. Uh, if basically what happens is, is they're like, I'm a lazy ass doctor, and I don't want to really look anything up. So I've been giving Cipro for years for sinus infections, so that's what you're going to get. Uh, that's completely inappropriate and borderline malpractice. So the things mentioned in the black box warning are not the only disaster side effects that the fluoroquinolones are known for. They're also known for muscle pain, muscle weakness, joint pain, joint swelling, psychosis, anxiety, insomnia, depression, suicidal thoughts, hallucinations. Uh, and then you can see from the rest of this chart several other things. Now keep in mind that all the fluoroquinolones are very powerful antibiotics. And so they're basically gonna carpet bomb your gut bacteria. And so you could wind up having C. difficile associated diarrhea or a whole host of other gastrointestinal symptoms from bloating to diarrhea to constipation to gut pain to cramping because you basically carpet bombed all of the nice friendly bacteria in your gut. So I'm gonna put the list of medications and these are only the ones that are FDA approved in the United States. If you're in another country, there's quite possibly other brand names that are not on this list. And there may even be other fluoroquinolones 
uh, generics that are not on this list. So you're gonna have to do your due diligence since uh, it's very obvious from the number of prescriptions written uh, that, that pharmacies keep a tally of that doctors are still grossly over prescribing the fluoroquinolones for infections that they should never be prescribed for. So I want you to memorize this list, maybe even print this out and keep this in your wallet or your purse. Uh, and then anytime you go to the doctor with an infection, when they give you an antibiotic prescription, you're gonna look on this list and see if it's one of these. And if it is, you're gonna have a discussion with your doctor at that point and say, doc, why didn't you tell me there was a black box warning for this drug? Why didn't you tell me that this could cause suicidal thoughts? Is there not another antibiotic that you could have given me besides Cipro or Levofloxacin? Is that really, that's, that's the one that you're gonna give me? And after that conversation, I think uh, from that day forward, your doctor will perhaps be on his or her toes as they should have been anyway, and won't make such a dastardly mistake again. I put links to the FDA website about the fluoroquinolones down in the show notes below. Uh, please be vigilant. We should be able to trust our doctors when we go to them with a complaint, but very often we're not able to trust our doctors and therefore you have to be more vigilant when you go to the doctor than you should have to be. I'm sorry about that, but I also want you to be aware. This is Dr. Barry, I'll see you next time.